But on top of that, uh, because of the modular nature of the editor, we've been able to add anything we want. The animators now use this tool, the, um, the, the landscape painters use this tool, and it's all being involved, evolved again to, to meet the needs of our internal project. So it's not, it's not just, a, uh, just an engine and a tech demo. This is actually works really well for, for what you want to do with this technology. And you'll see here, this is the biggest addition. And this is the terrain editor. It has, it, it's, I, I kind of call it a combination between Photoshop and then one of the 3D uh, you know, professional packages. Because we have some model tumbling and, and some of the things that the artists like out of those programs. But then on top of that, we've added this kind of, uh, you know, we, we have stamps and terrain tiles, and, I, and I'll show a little bit of that in a minute, but it's almost like this palette the artist can choose from. And if anybody uses Photoshop, you know you, know you end up setting up these custom brushes or you, you get this system just the way you like it. So we've kind of given the artist what they want to, to, to best take advantage of, of uh, creating this. So again, we have, I would call it three different ways to get to the level of detail you're seeing in, in the uh, track there. The first way is the artists are allowed to take giant pieces of geometry in whatever tool they're comfortable with. They can use Max, they can use uh, Lightwave Moto. We, we have a bunch of guys using a bunch of different things. So they just create these giant, I call them mega geometry tiles. And whatever the tool allows them to build. And they can put a totally unique texture on top of there, which means this giant boulder over here can have the, the unique bump map that matches and the diffuse. So you get these really cool large scale details. And that's extremely important when you're racing by in an environment like this in a car. You need to see those kind of landmarks in a, in a game. Uh, then on top of that, we have this tiling system. And this might look familiar because other games actually use this, this system to do their entire terrain. You can see the dimmer areas uh, when I move to the tiling system. Those are actually some of those mega geometry tiles, as I like to call them, with their unique texturing. And uh, John takes all of that and builds the, the base of the mega texture. Then on top of that, I can come to this tiling system. The, uh, the artist gets a little brush like this. He can come choose through these, uh, these tiles that we built up over time or make new ones. There's no limitation here. But he's not actually editing individual pixels. It's much easier than that. I'm going to probably make this look ugly because I'm not an artist, but it'll give you the idea. So I can take this, size it up to any size. I can kind of scrub out an area. Let's put some grass in here. Then I'll update that. Yes, and then I'll find the button to move back to the preview mode. And you'll see what I've done now is I've replaced the existing tiles with this kind of grassy texture. And there's no limitation to that. Again, the artists are free to use whatever they want. If they don't like that grass texture, they can go in and make a new one. If they wanted something totally different, they can do that. All of those limitations, now basically we don't have to rely on artists to be good optimizers as far as it comes to surface texturing. They can just be good artists. And it's worked out really well so far. We've actually had one guy built this entire terrain, and this is while we're developing both the tools and figuring out what we want. But he did it in about two man months, as John said. But he could probably redo it in a, in a significantly uh, shorter amount of time. Then on top of that, you can see it left what we call these stamps on top. And again, originally, this was nothing. It started out as just one tile texture. But if I move to the stamp delete mode, I'm not going to delete any of these. But you can see me hovering around with all the different types of stamps that can be stamped on top. And if I move to the stamp palette and choose something like, let's do some graffiti because that's nice and I'll choose this danger side, go to stamp mode. They're able to scale, rotate, and there's no limit to where this can go. Um, they can stamp the full, all the, the, there's basically a couple of different ways and we're adding new ones all the time as the artists need. But uh, the normal mode stamps both the diffuse, the bump map, and everything about uh, you know, that particular uh, material. But you can come in here and do cool stuff like take the, let's add just the diffuse at 50%. I'll try to stamp it across these bones here. So you can see what it did was tone down the diffuse, leaves the bump map that was already existing, and kind of stamps it right over there. So it's, it's a layer on top. And there's no, there's no danger with screwing up because you can, you can undo really quickly like I can take those off. And, and all of the stamps, if I go back into stamp delete mode, all of these are saved forever. Anybody else can go back in here and edit, edit these stamps. 
So unlike a, um, like a Photoshop file, if you flatten it all and forgot to save all your layers or something like that, this is always saved for us. And, and we can actually have multiple artists working on completely different parts of the terrain. Uh, as many as, as we want. I mean, it, it works better if you just you pick a section. But we could throw one artist on this corner over here and say, hey, the player has to get out and, and, and look at this ruined you know, car and search for some goodies in there. And then uh, we could send another guy near the start area and start working there. And they can just work simultaneously. And one of the really neat things uh, is, that, is that everybody else who's playing the game, we can actually be driving around the terrain and see these updates as we go. And, and not only on our PC or our development system, you can actually see it across all of the platforms. We usually keep these set up every morning and make new builds, but if somebody goes look at the PS3, they can see it be, uh, being updated live. We even have guys that work at home over VPN get some pretty you know, successful speeds about having it update over, over that, uh, that distance. So let me show a couple of other neat things. There's a few more options in here that, that I think are really cool. I won't be able to get the, the most impressive use out of this, but I think just seeing it will give you an idea of what they can do. If I take the bump only, let's take something really obvious like my little test stamps here. Go to the stamp mode. The artists have the option to, let's see, scale it up a bit, rotate it, let's find something that's bumpy. Let's go right here, stamp that down. And what it did was take only the bump map of this new uh, stamp and completely erase the, uh, the, the, all the bump map information that was underneath. And again, this is not the best example of that, but they've been able to, for instance, this area here, this didn't start out this way. The artist actually went in and created some very convincing bumpy rocks sticking out of what used to be a, uh, a flat surface. And they're finding all sorts of neat ways to, to use that. And, and you don't, just these preset options is not the limit. We, we're, adding, uh, we're adding the ability to, to recolor diffuse on the fly and, and all these other the neat, neat artist driven features that would uh, allow them to basically use this palette that we built up and without creating new art, new art relatively quickly go in and completely change the way an area looks without too much trouble. There's actually a good example of that in here. I kind of like to, to show this off because this was, uh, this was one of the design requests. When we, were, when we were choosing this environment to show for uh, our tech demo, what we wanted was to add the vendor in there because we knew people would be, okay, yeah, that's fine, that's a nice outdoor area, but can you go into an indoor area and still have that kind of detail you guys usually do? So we added the vendor in there, and he's, he's in here. And uh, we asked Jean, the guy who actually created this, this mega texture, to go in here and make something like a parking lot. And it started out as just this, this rock here. It was literally, literally a rock there. And what he did was come in, and, and again, this all happened over 10, 15 minutes. While I'm at, up at my system working on something else, I'm seeing it get updated, and I was pretty surprised. But if I go into tile mode here, you can see he chose a bunch of the, uh, these different concrete tiles, kind of just brushed them around, added that. And then on top of that, you got a pretty good base. And then if I go into uh, the stamp delete mode, you can see all of the stamps he laid down, these cracks and things. And he's not, he, he didn't even have to be that careful about it. It's amazing the results you can get by just throwing down all these different cracks and things. And he was able to make a pretty convincing, you know, parking lot situation exactly like we asked for. And it happened, like I said, all in about 15 minutes. Of course, he threw in a couple of nice models just to sell it. But, um, but I think that would pe make people more comfortable about exactly how you get to that level of detail. It's not some, you know, some totally foreign concept for artists. They get to work, work with their little palette system, and it's pretty comfortable for them tumbling around in, in, this, uh, in this editor here. And there's a ton of other options in here, like ability to hide the models, show the models. We actually have uh, a bunch of different lighting options. And this is something that I'm sure some of you noticed, some of the darker areas, it, it didn't necessarily look that canyony. But right now, that's what John is spending a lot of time on. We have, we have the ability right now to move through different shadow qualities and get some pretty neat results. For instance, this. Uh, this pole here, you can see how the shadows kind of attenuate away from the base and you get a lot fuzzier as it gets far away. So we have some pretty good shadow options now, 
but we, we will eventually have full radiosity and, and a lot of different op options to, uh, you know, to add to the artist. We can also use one sunlight or multiple lights. You can add as many lights as you want and kind of have it bake in with, with uh, you know, a really good looking because it's done offline. But instead of, uh, you know, waiting for that, a lot of the artists will work in this kind of quick, fast shadow mode. And you can see even at full resolution, the artist can really quickly just uh, lay down its stamps.